presidential candidate in focus now. Good to see you. Uh, I want to start with the nation's you. number one octogenarian, poised now to attend the group of 20, the G20. While our enemies are cozier than ever with each other, how's Joe Biden's foreign policy for you so far? I think it's been a disaster. And I do think, Harris, one of the great risks we face is the alliance between countries like Russia and China. Now North Korea getting closer in that relationship as well. I think this is a reflection of U.S. weakness on the global stage. The fact that we're not energy independent in this country is why Putin actually had the courage to go after Ukraine. The fact that we're dependent on China for our modern way of life is why we didn't have the courage to shoot down that Chinese spy balloon flying over half the United States. So when the United States is weak at home, that sends a signal to our adversaries abroad. And I think one of the things that we need to focus on, that I'm focused on as the next U.S. president if I'm elected, is pulling apart that Russia-China alliance, deterring China from going after Taiwan while avoiding World War so, III. And Harris, with due respect, I think I'm the only candidate that's offered clarity on how to do that. So look, I, I appreciate the enumeration for time. You do that very well. But I want to go deeper than that, because you've taken some Good. criticism for your lack thereof of knowledge, at least according to Nikki Haley, and now a growing list of, of rivals and other Republicans. So I, I want to know, what exactly would you do to decouple countries like China and Russia and North Korea? How do you split them up? Absolutely. And, and Harris, don't mistake my lack of holding political office for lack of knowledge in this area. Believe me, I understand this deeply. The one thing I would do is I would use the end of the Ukraine war as an opportunity to negotiate a deal that requires Russia to exit its military partnership with China. Because the Russia-China alliance is the single greatest threat we face. Russia's nuclear capabilities, China's naval capabilities, the fact that we depend on China, that's a risk to the U.S. That's the first thing I would do. Second thing I would do is strengthen our alliances with nations like India that could close the Andaman Sea, where China gets its oil supplies hmm. in the event of a conflict. Strengthen our alliances with countries like Japan and South Korea to help reduce our economic dependence on China. And to be crystal clear, something that no other presidential candidate has actually been able to say, that we will defend Taiwan hmm. with clarity. Right now, the U.S. adopts the one China policy. I say no. We will defend Taiwan un until, at least until, we have achieved semiconductor independence in the U.S., at which point we resume strategic ambiguity, which is the current U.S. posture. Uh, I all think right. clarity will actually be our friend, not ambiguity. Two quick follows. When the Ukraine war ends, of course, nobody has a date certain on that. And, and do you see us leaning in and having to fight uh, to get that to happen? I actually view it the other way, Harris. I think that clarity through diplomacy can lead us to the end of that war. On the deal that I would do, I've been very clear about this, Ukraine would come out with its sovereignty intact, which is far from certain on the track they're going today. But I would tell Vladimir Putin, look, in a good deal, everybody gets something. We would make a permanent commitment that NATO will not admit Ukraine to NATO and also freeze the current lines of control. But the bigger win for the United States and for the free world as we know it is pulling apart the Russia-China alliance and further get the Russian military presence out of the Western Hemisphere. Hmm. Nicaragua, Venezuela, Cuba, where there's a Russian military presence. I favor a modern Monroe doctrine to say, get out of our hemisphere. This is how we actually secure peace, advance American interests, and avoid World War III in the process. All right, you mentioned Putin. I want to go further here. Criticism after you made this comment yeah. at a campaign event on Monday. Let's watch together. I'm wondering how you'll hold Putin responsible for his war crimes. I do not trust Vladimir Putin. I think many of his actions have been craven. But I think that our top enemy is communist China. And we cannot strengthen communist China by driving Russia further into China's arms. The U.S. president is not the International Court of Justice. The International Court of Justice is the International Court of Justice. Former National Security Advisor John Bolton's reaction to that now. I think Ramaswamy reminds me an awful lot of Donald Trump. Uh, he has very firm opinions on subjects he knows absolutely nothing about. Like Trump said, he would put Zelensky and Putin in a room and mm -hmm. he'd have it solved in 24 hours. Uh, Ramaswamy is going to go to Moscow, convince Putin to break the alliance with China and end the war that way. I mean, they, they, they might as well be in kindergarten talking about uh, a very complex situation. 
Your fellow GOP contenders echoed that. Former Texas Congressman Will yeah. Hurd called your foreign policy approach. This is a quote, always wrong, never in doubt. You've also faced previous attacks from former VP uh, Mike Pence and the former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley on this issue. How do you defend against those attacks? I think this is a fundamental ideological divide in the GOP, and we should have an open debate about it. The Karl Rove, John Bolton, Nikki Haley, Mike Pence, Chris Christie wing of the party does have one set of views. I respect their views, and I'm not going to distort what they say. I'm a little disappointed that they would distort what I say instead of having an open debate. My view is that a peace treaty here makes sense. I come from the Richard Nixon school of realist foreign policy. Did Richard Nixon trust Mao Zedong? No, he did not. But did he recognize we needed to pull Mao out of the USSR's clasp? Yes, he did. I think Putin is like the new Mao. We have to pull Russia out of that military alliance with China. And Harris, I'll remind you, this foreign policy and military establishment, mm -hmm. we have failed when it comes to homeland defenses, cyber defense, super EMP defenses, missile defenses in the United States, utterly lacking today. I think that is malpractice from the existing military and foreign policy establishment. And I do think it will take an outsider. One area where I will give Trump credit is he did keep us out of a war, something we can say that's different than the other three presidents of this century. But I'm going to take that to the next level, reuniting this country, avoiding World War III, and actually asserting American interests based on principle. And yes, I do think it'll take a newcomer and an outsider to the neocon foreign policy establishment to deliver that. That's why I'm in this race. Well, you're absolutely right in terms of the, the national security failures. I'd add to that the border which is a huge one. And, and that's on this current watch, although we have seen struggles with border policies up for decades now. What we're seeing now yes. is epic and, and really per this commander in chief. All right, uh, Vivek, let's get to this.